Around the world, women work. From collecting trash off the streets, to cleaning homes, to selling goods at local markets, women's hard work helps keep families out of poverty and communities functioning. But much of this work is informal and invisible. Informal workers account for more than half of the urban economy in most developing countries. Yet their contributions remain almost entirely unrecognized. Three photographers set out with WeGo, a global network focused on securing livelihoods for informal workers to capture the images and stories of women at work on three continents. In Lima, Peru and Bogota, Colombia, Juan Arredondo spent long hours shadowing the work of street vendors and waste pickers. What surprised me about the waste pickers was how much physicality the work demanded from the workers. They either get up early in the morning or at night. Whether it rains or not, they still have to go because they have to make a day's living. I met this couple in Bogota. They showed me bags of soda cans, beer cans that they were storing, hoping for a better time where the aluminum price would go up. They serve an example for other waste pickers. They were able to save enough money to have a home, to have a car, and to be leaders within their own association. In Accra, Ghana, Jonathan Togovnik met many women who hawked on the streets or were headloaders, transporting goods back and forth to large bustling markets. The markets are controlled by women and most of the stalls are owned by women. Most of them have a sense of pride that they have an independent business and provide for their families. UNIWA means Union of Informal Workers Association. So I was quite surprised to see how organized and unified the workers are. They belong to several associations that protect and advocate on their behalf and work together to resolve issues. I met a woman named Ishi Adam. It was quite an emotional experience seeing her carry heavy loads on her head while also carrying her young child on her back. I really admire her tenacity and strength. In Johannesburg, Jonathan went behind closed doors where women work cleaning the homes of wealthier families. 53 million women worldwide toil as domestic workers. The domestic workers spend most of their day cleaning the houses. They've been working in these homes for many years. Many of them work in order to provide for their families that live far away from them. In Bangkok, Paula Bronstein went into the homes of women who set up in a small corner of their living space to transform their homes into places of production. The Brunsi makes a living producing Muslim garments. She had undergone constraints typical to informal workers, especially irregular work, and now she has a more stable income. The informal workers Paula visited in Ahmedabad were part of Siwa, a pioneering union of about two million self-employed women that provides poor working women with a wide variety of services, skills training, childcare, microloans, as well as advocacy tools to improve their livelihoods and lives. The woman who surprised me most was Ganga Ben Vanita. She works as a contractor. She has physical strength, which got her where she is today. She can carry bricks, she can mix cement, and she's there doing the same exact work as the males are. In fact, she's supervising them. My belief is any woman that can rise above the stereotypical Indian female image is truly a hero. Capturing these women in their daily lives helps make their critical work more visible. This visibility is key to achieving Rigo's mission of securing the lives and livelihoods of these workers.
But change can only happen if workers are organized and can speak with a unified voice. Together, they have the ability to influence policies and plans that could better their lives and our world. Hey, hey.